So we moved all of our equipment onto the Nautilus, integrated our systems in with their systems, and we've been working with the vehicle Nereid Under Ice to explore the area. And uh, we started off going down to the seafloor and communicating with our vehicle through optical modems. This is something new and exciting, and what we did there was we deployed our vehicle with an optical modem, and then we deployed Argus with a topside optical modem to talk to Nui underwater. Although the animation that was made shows these as pointing laser beams of light down at Nui for comms, the reality is that there's a two pi steradian cone of light coming out about 180 degrees across the face of each of these. The wide angle allows the vehicles to move around with respect to each other and maintain optical comms. So we're here in the control room at the start of dive 29 for Nui, the third one of this cruise and the last one with the optical modem. The goal as soon as this survey is done is to have the pilots drive down and, and start uh, actually sampling the seat site itself. The idea here is that we can generate maps that show them targets so that they can go right to that target on the same dive rather than say recovering a vehicle, making a map and then putting another vehicle back down. So at this point in the mission, Nui has completed an AUV survey of the area and they are identifying a target for me as the pilot to go down and land and explore further. So they will uh, direct me where to go and pass control over to me as the pilot and I will pilot the vehicle over the uh, optical modem. That blue, that blue light flickering and that's actually the optical modem talking from Nui to Argus up through the cable, uh, and that's how we're getting this video feed. Um, yeah, we've always dreamed of having video through an optical link, or through the water, as it were. Never thought that I would see this actually happen. This is magic and you Roger. Roger. So we're looking at, uh, uh, we believe is a seep on the seafloor. Our objectives on this dive are to demonstrate the uh, manipulation from shore and using uh, some assistive autonomy from here on the vessel. All right, taking control now. Definitely sitting on some kind of bacterial mat. Okay, so we've got one camera to work with, but it seems to be, seems to be stable. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's holding at ten pretty, okay. pretty nicely. So I think what we'll try to do is get the ARM software up and running, then uh, give that to you, Casey, to try out. Do that. All right, I'll try closing the jaw. All right, nothing here yet. And the jaw has closed. Successful remote control of the arm. All right, so um, do you want to take a push core? It's a really full house in the control room right now. Uh, the whole Nui team is here working on a dive with the optical modem connected to Argus. And what's also exciting is there's a whole team ashore working on the troubleshooting um, as well, looking to how we can optimize, how we can improve the strength of the connection, which will let us do a little bit more of the autonomous manipulation and the cool tests that are going on. So we're in kind of the, the bonus seating here, looking in on all the action, but it's great to have everybody in this conversation and working together. Yeah, we've got a, a motor fault at the moment. Oh, okay. That would be why. <laughs> yep. yep. Motor fault register boo. Yeah. Our, our error code that we're looking at currently is B000, so. <laughs> it is okay. really boo. Anyway, he's getting ready for Halloween. So uh, I, I just saw that the Hui team all put their hands into the mm -hmm. center and said, ready, break on yeah. their <laughs> troubleshooting meeting. Team, and team on three. It sounds like the decision was that we, we have a, a request to capture some images with the lights on on Argus uh, of Nui on the seafloor. And, and what that's gonna do is blind the optical modem connection. So the Nui team's gonna work to get the vehicle into a state where it can lose that connection 
So we'll do a little bit of camera work with Argus and Nui here, and then uh, Nui's going to recover. So Casey, with that hydraulic uh, <laughs> pump fault, you're going to yeah, be like coming up with the doors open and the manipulator in its current position? Uh, roger that, yeah. We're unable to operate any of the hydraulic functions at the moment, so it will come up all opened as is. So okay. recovery will be a little bit more uh, interesting, but the weather is nice and calm, so yeah, yeah. should be good. on the back deck of the Nautilus. Um, we're really excited. We just knocked out uh, a problem we had from the last dive. Our hydraulic plant failed on us. We went through each item and found all the different issues that there were. And we had to tap on all the different skills that each person brings. We had electrical and mechanical and software intervention. And we have everybody here. They got their hands inside the vehicle. Um, they're putting the pieces back together. They're making sure that everything's ready to go. Um, getting set up for the next dive. So it is the final day of our cruise aboard Nautilus today, and we are setting up uh, Nui in its uh, normal tethering configuration. Uh, and we are going to head down to the seafloor and see if we can accomplish our last objectives for the cruise in doing a uh, slew of autonomous manipulation demonstrations. We are about to demonstrate autonomous manipulation. We've had uh, seven days of successful Mesobot dives and five days of Nui operations. We had one day of switching over the Nui vehicle from an AEV to an ROV. And then here, the final dive is the culmination of this activity with the demonstration of autonomous manipulation. And so the teamwork and the competency of the folks we have out here is the only reason why this could be successful, right? So right now we are on the seafloor. Gideon is uh, going through the first paces of this autonomous manipulation demonstration and uh, he's trying to line up that camera on the end of the arm so that it can see all of these uh, visual tags called April tags on the tools. You can see each of the T handles there has a couple of tags on it. So right now he's trying to get the camera system to autonomously so detect those rotate tags. Rotate the wrist so it's not pointing getting in the way of the tag, execute the grasp. Nice. All right, so I'm going to press the button to remove the tool from the tray. It should just try to remove it straight up. Yep. Your plan. So we're going to execute that plan. We have a push core out of the quiver. OK. So we want to move the arm up a little more. I'm going to bring the arm straight up so we get some elevation. Raising it up. We have a push cord. All right, so I'm just going to let Amy make the plan from here. We're in a pretty safe place. Okay. So. Sounds good. If you well, we just uh, reached another milestone in the, in the development of advanced autonomous vehicle systems. That. Uh, autonomous vehicle that has a fiber that's connected to us, but the fiber is 14 kilometers long, it just pays out, so it's, we do have a connection. But then we've transferred control of the manipulator uh, that you see functioning right now to people in Woods Hole with other people connected in Chicago that are orchestrating a sampling routine with none of us operating it. So the, this is now being completely operated by people off the ship. And this is a portent of when we're not even on the ship. So we're moving faster than I thought we were gonna move. But this has been quite a new milestone in our undersea exploration. 